Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. I'm happy to be with you today. I hope you're happy in Jesus. God is good all the time. Remember that whatever you're going through, he is with you. He's there. He'll never leave you or forsake you. God is good. Listen, our global family spans 18 nations, but our headquarters are here in South Florida. We have a church called Awakening House of Prayer a church in Birmingham, Alabama, a church in Colinga, California. But our church here in South Florida, we have services, two of them, 1047 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. every Sunday. Listen, two different messages, two different worship teams, two different styles, two different encounters. And the glory of God, we got double, double on the glory on Sunday. I mean, the glory of God hit the first service, pop, pop. The glory of God hit the second service, pow, pow. And we pressed in to the presence of God, breakthrough all around us. If you're in South Florida, please. Don't sit in a dead, dumb church where God hasn't moved in half a century. Get over to Awakening House of Prayer and get refilled. Amen. Get, 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 get the opportunity to taste and see how good he is experientially. Amen. God is good. You can watch our first service online at ahop.online, www.ahop.online. Watch that first service over there. Second service is not televised. All right. We love the Holy Spirit and we love to pray. Awakening Prayer Hubs is a prayer movement. I want you to join it. Find a prayer hub to join. Start a prayer hub, but not unless the Lord tells you to. I'm getting a little weary of these ones who come in excited and then they say, eh, I'm too busy to pray. Oh, it crushes my heart when people say they're too busy to pray. Awakening Prayer Hubs is a movement. You dedicate, commit to pray at least once a month. Anybody can do that. Nobody's too busy for that. If you're too busy for that, you're too busy for God. Amen. Because he tells us to pray for all those in authority to make intercession for all men. We're supposed to pray. Right. And I know I've got a lot of prayer warriors out there who want to be trained up to be prayer leaders. Join the movement. Let me train you to be prayer leaders. Start an awakening prayer hub only by the leading of the Lord. Don't do it to be my best friend. I've already got a best friend. But do it if you want to bless God and you want to bless your city. Awakeningprayerhubs.com. Join the movement. Amen. Ignite Network, we're coming on our fourth year of existence as of the time of this recording. We're a prophetic family, a prophetic tribe. You can watch a ton of videos in there. Get help interpreting your dreams. Get your prophecies judged and weighed. Learn and grow the right way, the wrong way. There's a right way and a wrong way. Amen. IgniteNow.org. Join the movement. Now. Now, 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 we're going to get into our devotional. I'm reading today from my devotional, Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victories. You should pick up a copy for yourself because we don't read from it every day. And this is a spiritual warfare devotional. Cindy Trim wrote the foreword. And today's devotion is titled, Putting Thousands of Demons to Flight. My, 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 my. That's why I'm one of thousands. One of the reasons I'm one of a thousand live on this broadcast. You can imagine a breakthrough with a thousand people in unity. Putting thousands of demons to flight. That's the title. And here's what I heard the Lord say. I have called you not to fight every battle alone. I've called you to stand with others. For one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. And together you will see swift victory, says the Lord. Stubborn battles that could not seem to be won will be won in an instant. As you stand together in unity, for where there is unity, I command a blessing, says the Lord. That blessing is called victory, increase, retribution, and vindication. By allowing me to use you as a war club for your brothers and sisters, I will bring increase to you. And the spoils of war will be part and in parcel of your reward. Amen. God is good. First Peter 3, 8, 1 Corinthians 1, 10, Philippians 2, 2 are the scripture references for today. Now the prayer starter and the decree, Father, help me see any place of my mind that is not in unity with your spirit. Help me find those who can truly agree with me in spiritual warfare unto victory. I decree a slippery path for the enemy trying to sneak up on my soul. I declare I am in unity with the body of Christ and the enemy is scurrying away in Jesus name. Amen and amen. 
Father, we give you praise and honor and glory. We magnify you this morning because you are good and your mercies endure forever. I say he is good and his mercies endure forever. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We issue thanksgiving from our lips. We issue thanksgiving from our hearts. We issue thanksgiving from the deepest recesses of our spirit. We're grateful. We're thankful to you because you are. <laughs> That's all. That's the only reason. Because you are. We don't, even, we, don't even, we don't even need anything else from you, God, because you've already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You've already given us the name above all names at which every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. You've already given us delegated authority from Christ the King. Christ's own authority rests and dwells on the inside of us. We're not even asking for anything in particular this morning. God, we just want to thank you for what you've already done. Gosh, if we could just grab hold and understand and comprehend what he's already done. Lord, we thank you for the shed blood at Calvary. We thank you that you allowed yourself to be crucified on that tree, on Golgotha. We thank you, Lord, that you shed your blood for the remission of our sins. That by faith in the shed blood of Christ, we are justified. We are redeemed. Come on. We thank you, Lord, that we are redeemed from the curse of the law. You've already done it. The Bible says that we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Christ Jesus becoming a curse for us. For it is written, every man who hangs on a tree is cursed. That the blessing of the Gentiles, the blessing of Abraham can come upon the Gentiles. We thank you, Lord, that the blessings of Abraham are our portion. We thank you, Lord, for your benefits. <laughs> for the benefits of being kingdom citizens, healing, healing. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. We thank you, Lord, for your resurrection power. We thank you, Lord, for all the things you've already done. Help us not to forget to thank you for what's available to us every moment of every day. Your spirit, your very presence, the spirit of life available to us all the time. An open door policy with the king of kings, the spirit of life, the spirit of truth to lead us, to guide us so that we don't have to stumble. We don't have to fall every moment of every day. You're ordering our steps. How it changes our prayer life when we understand how much he's already done for us. What is already available to us? by way of the covenant when we begin to understand that listen when we begin to understand what he's already done and how thanking him for it is one of the most powerful prayers you can release i said thanking him for what he's already done is one of the most powerful prayers you can ever release why because it acknowledges that it's a done deal when you thank him Lord, I thank you that I'm healed. Even when your body is manifesting symptoms, the prayer is in the thanksgiving because you are acknowledging the reality of who you are in Christ. You are healed. You are acknowledging in that moment of thanksgiving the reality that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are acknowledging by that thanksgiving that by his stripes you are healed you're acknowledging that you don't have to pray and cry out and just oh just oh jesus please heal me please heal me please heal me you can do that that doesn't bother him but how much more powerful is it when we meditate on the living word of god and get faith to arise in our spirit that when we read that word we can say thank you that healing was already accomplished on the cross for me and make it personal. How much more powerful when we are oppressed by demons and there's not a deliverance minister in sight. And we can say, thank you 
that deliverance is the children's bread. I thank you that you are delivering me right now, God, because you're the deliverer and I submit myself to you and I'm resisting this devil. I'm going to do what the word says and I'm going to have what the word has. Thank you for your word that tells me what I can have and who I am in Christ. How much more powerful is it when instead of begging and pleading constantly, we begin to thank him. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can't ask God to heal you or that you shouldn't. But how many times do you have to ask him? How many times do you have to ask him to do the same thing? How many times do you have to ask him to do what's already done? You should only have to ask him once. After that, just thank him that he did it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sickness comes against your body or whatever it is. Uh, uh, let's just stick with the sickness. Sickness comes against your body and, and you ask him once to heal you. Then you just keep thanking him that is done until it manifests. You don't have to keep asking. He heard you the first time. The, the shift into Thanksgiving will shift your mind. The shift into Thanksgiving will shift your words. The shift into Thanksgiving will shift your body. It will seal your healing. When the, not when the 10 lepers walked away after Jesus said, you're cleansed, they weren't cleansed in that moment. When they walked away, they got healed as they walked away. But one said, thank you. And I've always wondered if the one who came back and said, thank you, might have been the only one that kept their healing. We don't know. The others seem to be ungrateful. We don't know if they went to Moses and made the offering they were supposed to make for the cleansing of leprosy. We don't know, but we know the one came back and said, thank you. And that was the one that Jesus highlighted. So father, we thank you. We thank you for our deliverance and we will cry out to you for deliverance, but we will thank you that when we cry out, you heard us and you're doing it. You're working it out. You're making a way you're entering into the equation. You insert yourself into our storyline. We're so thankful. We're so grateful. That prodigal, Lord, we thank you that they're coming back to you. We thank you that they're coming home. We've cried out and cried out and cried out and cried out and cried out. And that's not wrong because it's the persistent prayer that many times brings results. But let me just shift your mind a little bit. Thanksgiving can be your prayer, it can be part of your prayer. It can be the seal on your prayer. It can be the expression of gratitude that you know that he's doing it. So we thank you. Come on, what do you need to thank him for that hasn't manifested yet? What do you need to thank him for that you've been praying for? And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying to stop praying. I'm saying to start thanking. Because many of us, we pray for the same thing over and over and over, but we never thank him. It's as if we think he didn't hear us. It's as if we think that it's not happening, but it is happening. It just doesn't always happen in a moment's time. It's not always a miracle. So Father, we thank you that our finances are healthy. Come on, begin to thank him for a healthy flow of finances. I don't care if you're seeing it yet or not. Thank him for it. What's the song? Praise him in advance, right? There's something about that. Jehoshaphat led an army into battle, praising and worshiping God for a battle he hadn't yet won, and he won it. What if your thanksgiving was a weapon of warfare? What if your thanksgiving kept your faith high? because you are focused on the outcome instead of the current reality. I said, what if your Thanksgiving kept your faith strong? Because instead of focusing on the current reality of what you don't have, of what you need, you're focused on the God who gives, the God who provides, the God who pours out liberally, whatever it is you need. So Father, help us to continue to walk in faith. Help us to continue to trust you. Help us to continue to walk in an attitude of thanksgiving. Help us to continue to remember all the things you've already done. Help us to remember the past victories. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of your promises, which are yes and amen. We don't have to beg. And how much more powerful is it when we get this concept? And we spend a lot less time begging God for what we need. And we begin to spend more time interceding for other people who don't know God the way you do. How much more powerful is it when we step into a realm where we can ask, believe, and thank God in the same breath? 
and stand in faith for the promise to manifest and then move on and pray for somebody else. And we're spending more time interceding for our cities, more time interceding for our lost loved ones, more time interceding for our countries than we are asking for what we need. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else we need will be added to us. It doesn't even say we have to pray about it. <laughs> it doesn't even say we have to pray about it. You ever catch that before? Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else you need will be added to you. There's no mention of having to ask for it. And I'm not saying that we don't have to ask because James says sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you have not because you ask not. But what if we spent more time thanking than asking? And what if we were able to spend more time interceding for others than being concerned about the affairs of our own life, trusting that God will raise somebody else up to intercede for us? And what if our prayer life became more of, a, of an adoration of who he is? What if our prayer life became more of an intimate fellowship with the Lord God Almighty? What if our prayer life became more about acknowledging who he is and, and studying his emotions and enjoying his presence? than always having to beg and plead God to do something that he already said he's done. Father, shift our minds this morning. Shift our minds this morning. Shift our minds this morning. Because you're good and you were selfless. And I don't know, Jesus, what you prayed, all the prayers you prayed when you sought the Father early in the morning. When you got up hours before daylight to be with the Lord. I don't know what you prayed, but somehow I think most of your prayers, Jesus, were for us. I think most of your prayers were to see what the Father wanted you to do and to hear what the Father wanted you to say that day. Give us this day our daily bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Have you ever considered that prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily revelation. Give us this day our daily direction. It's more about the food. It's not as much, it's more than about food. It's about that daily revelation. And I believe when Jesus got up early in the morning to seek his face, he was seeking the will of God for his ministry. I believe he was praying for his disciples. I believe he was praying to prepare the hearts of the people who would hear his message. The ones who had the capacity to hear, the ones who had not already been blinded. I believe he prayed for Nicodemus before Nicodemus encountered him. And that is why Nicodemus was able to come so close to the kingdom and eventually believe. So, Father, we want to be more like you. And we are needy. We're desperate. We're absolutely desperate. We're absolutely desperate for you. But we don't want to walk around like beggars and paupers because we're kids of the king. We are daughters of God. We are sons of God. We are the bride of Christ. We are not paupers in the spirit. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. We don't have to beg you for revelation. We don't have to beg you for prayer answers. We don't have to beg you to do what you've already done on the cross. You accomplished it all on the cross. The, the atonement carries the healing. The atonement is all uh, the healing and all the deliverance is all in the atonement. It's all wrapped up a, as a package in our salvation. Psalm 103, forget not all of his benefits. He heals my diseases. He saves my life, delivers me. So, Father, help us to shift our mindset, yes, into receiving mode, but not through begging, through thanksgiving, through praise, through adoration, through worship, through a commitment to intercession, through a commitment to praying for other people. Help us, Lord, to, at the height of our trial, get our minds off of ourselves and get them on you. Put our minds on you. You keep us in perfect peace. When our minds are stayed on you, you keep us in perfect peace. Help us to get our minds off ourselves when we're going through and begin to pray for other people. Because what we make happen for other people in prayer, you'll make happen for us. The sacrifice that we make for another in intercession, when we feel like we're about to die on the inside, it keeps us going. It keeps us full of the spirit. It positions us for our own breakthrough. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We offer up the sacrifice of thanksgiving.
And I realize for some of you today, it is a sacrifice. I realize for some of you today, it is a sacrifice. But guess what? It's a well-pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. He loves you so much. He's going to answer your prayer. He's going to interrupt the enemy's plans for your life. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Why not enjoy your life until he does? Why not focus on the things that are good and lovely, of uh, honorable? Why not do what Paul said and think on these things? Why not choose to walk through the trial with your head held high and thank him for what he's already done? Why not choose to pray for somebody else? Why not choose to go out and do a good deed and get your mind off yourself? Whatever it takes to shake off the oppression. Lord, we're so grateful for you. (laughs) Eternally grateful for you, God. Oh, Jesus, we're so grateful. Holy Spirit, we're so grateful. We can't imagine what life would be without you. Lord, we don't know how those lost ones even get through the day without you because life is hard, but you are good. So, Father, we just lift up all of our lost loved ones, all of our lost friends right now. All of the lost ones who will stumble upon this broadcast. We just lift them up to you, God, and we ask you to encounter their hearts with your love. All of the lost spouses, the backslidden children, the prodigals, we just lift them up to you today because you're a good God and you love them more than we love them. And we lift them up to you and we ask them, we ask you, Lord, to, to deliver them from evil, to deliver them from the grips of the wicked one, to deliver them from the fiery aspects, the, the hellbound life that they're going toward God, deliver them, send laborers in their path to speak a word of life to them, send prophets and prophetic people to prophesy the deep recesses of their hearts so that they know that God is alive, that he sees, knows, and loves them. We just lift up all of our lost loved ones, those friends, those family members, Lord, and we say, God, save them, heal them, deliver them, set them on a right path for your glory. And we thank you that our households will be saved. We thank you. (laughs) We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in our finances. We thank you for what you're doing in our families. We thank you for what you're going to do in our lives this day, this day, this day. We're excited about this day because you're good this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now we're going higher. Revelation 3, 2 says, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. Strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains. There's some things in your life that the enemy has attacked. There's some issues in your life that the enemy has meddled in. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe your marriage has been compromised and it's close to death, it appears to be, strengthen it. Maybe your finances are dwindling down to nothing. Strengthen them. God is going to strengthen these things today, but you've got to do your part. We're going to pray this. You're going to be so empowered. Just keep pressing with me. Listen, pray in the spirit. Wake up. What does that mean? Well, it could be that we didn't discern the enemy attack. And that's why things in our life have been compromised. But guess what? We can rise up now. We can wake up. We can take authority. We can strengthen what remains, and it can be better than it was before. I said, your family life can be better than it was before. I said, your, your, your marriage, it can be better than it was before. It may look dead. It may look dry. It may look very, very dry, but it can be better than it was before. Your friendships can be better than it was before. Your business can be better than it was before. Pastors, listen to me. Your church can be better than it was before. I know that things have come into the earth and shaken everything that can be shaken. I know that marriages have been tested to the core. I know finances have been stretched to the max. I know churches have been decimated because people are too afraid to come or because cities have mandated that you can't open your doors. Strengthen what remains, pastors. Strengthen what remains, husbands. Strengthen what remains, wives. Strengthen what remains, entrepreneurs. Strengthen what remains. God will help you. If you set out to do it, he'll help you. He will not allow his will to perish in your life if you won't allow it. 
the plans and purposes of God, they stand. Strike them what remains. Build it back up again. You can build it. Nehemiah rebuilt the temple walls. They were in rubbles. Nehemiah rebuilt it. You can rebuild it. I release that Nehemiah anointing upon you even now in Jesus' name. It can be better. Come on, I release that Nehemiah, that apostolic anointing to build. Come on, apostolic anointing is not just to build a church, it's to build your life. Like the song says, we build our life on the foundation of his love. It's a firm foundation. I released that apostolic anointing to build, to rebuild that business. I know the enemy came in like a flood, but God will raise up a standard. Strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains. Be alert and strengthen what remains. Wake up and strengthen what remains. Be alert. Be alert. Be alert. alert. Wake up. Be watchful. Be vigilant. There was a time when Ezekiel was carried away in the spirit. (laughs) Ezekiel was carried away by the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says Ezekiel's account of it is the Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. And then he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Some of you look at your life and it's just dry bones everywhere. I know what it's like. I've lost everything more than once. Some of you look at your life. You look at your marriage. You look at your children. You look at your finances. Maybe it's your health. Some of you, it's across the board. There's just a valley of dry bones. God said, can these live again? He was measuring Ezekiel's faith. God was locating Ezekiel's faith. He asked him, can these bones live again? I'm asking you today, can the bones, the very dry bones in your marriage, can they live again? The answer is yes. You say yes. Can your finances, can they live again? Can they thrive again? The answer is yes. Can your children, can your relationship with your adult kids, can it live again? Can it thrive again? The answer is yes. It can. Nothing is impossible with God. And and Ezekiel said this, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones. Then the translation says, prophesy to the bones. Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. So you have to figure out and determine what is the sovereign Lord saying about your marriage? What is the sovereign Lord saying about your business? What is the sovereign Lord saying about your church? What is the sovereign Lord saying about your finances? What is the sovereign Lord saying about your health? And then you prophesy that. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to tell you what he says. Look, I am putting breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and I, and you will come to life. Listen, God wants to breathe on you. He wants to breathe on your body. He wants to breathe on your finances. He wants to breathe on your marriage. He wants to breathe on the dry bones in your life. Let him get an agreement, get an agreement with God. He can resurrect whatever the enemy has come in like a flood to destroy. Strengthen what remains. There were still bones there. God didn't tell him to prophesy the bones into existence. There were still bones there. There was still something to work with. There were still bones. Your husband, your wife is still in the house. Or even if they're not still in the house. If you're still married. And even if you're not still married. If it's God's will. He can bring it to pass. Prophesy to the dry bones. Prophesy to the prodigals. Prophesy to the debt. Did you hear me? Prophesy to the debt. Prophesy to the prodigals. Are you listening to me? Prophesy to the dry bone. You know how you strengthen a thing? Do you know how you strengthen a thing? You prophesy to it. You speak to it. You spend time working on it. If your house is falling apart, How do you strengthen it? How do you strengthen a roof that's leaking? You fix it. You spend time on it. 
Prophesy to your circumstances. Prophesy to the dry bones. Prophesy to what remains and strengthen it. Listen, here's the secret. As you prophesy to the dry bones, even when you don't feel like you can prophesy one more time, as you spend time on your marriage, even though it seems useless, as you keep trying to grow that church, even though it's not happening, it's not working, attendance is still down, it's not going back up, what's happening yet? Don't look. Don't look. Don't be tempted. God may do a miracle, but don't look. Just keep prophesying. Just keep putting the time into it. Sometimes things get worse when they get better, before they get better. When God begins to deal with the hearts of people, sometimes they run further away before they come back. You keep prophesying. You keep prophesying. You keep prophesying to those dry bones before you know it. God will bring back to life his will. He'll bring it back to life. He'll bring his will never passes away. The purposes of God stand always. Amen. 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 Somebody prophesy. Amen. Come on. Amen. God is so good. Isn't he? Lord, we thank you that the dry bones will live again. We thank you that the dry bones will live again. We thank you that the dry bones will live again. We're going to keep on. We're not going to grow weary in well-doing. We're not going to grow weary in prophesying. We're not going to grow weary in that. We're going to keep on prophesying. We're going to see life come back into what you birthed, God. Because anything that you birthed can never die. Anything birthed of the spirit will never die. So we thank you, God. We praise you and we thank you. We honor you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to share a few things with you first that you can get involved in. Amen. First thing I want to do is is remind you how you can sow. People always ask that. And then we have to answer a lot of emails if I don't tell you here. You can sow at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can use the cash app. We have a new cash app. It's I am dollar sign. I am Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the text to give. Text the word pray. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. 754-701-2161. You can also use the PayPal. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Come on, Richard. Keep prophesying. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the Venmo. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. And you can use the P.O. Box. If you want to send a check, a money order, a gift, a book, whatever it is you're trying to send. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. And we thank you for your offerings and your support. We can't do what we do without faithful support from those who consume what the ministry pours out on a daily basis. Amen. God is so good. I'm going to tell you, tell you some things you can get involved in. Uh, there's some free stuff and there's some paid courses. Uh, first thing is, remember, you can watch our, our service online at ahop.online. Watch Awakening House of Prayer services online at www.ahop.online. The message is archived for a week. After that, if you want to get into all my teaching archives, you've got to be a Web Church member. That's an exclusive benefit for Web Church members. Awakening House of Prayer, Web Church members, ahop.online. I hope to see you later. Have a great day. God's with you. Go with God. He'll go with you. Bless you.